Hey everyone, it's Rob with Passport to the Parks, and today is Monday, February the 25th, and I'm here at uh, Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort for a uh, Disney Skyliner update. Figure I'd hit uh, Caribbean Beach today, and we'll head over to Hollywood Studios as well, and try to make our way over to the International Gateway uh, via the water shuttle over there. So it should be a fairly long video, but we'll try to get through it as quickly as possible and see as much as we can. Uh, I always like to uh, wait, obviously, to see if we can get some people on here and say hello to. Hey, Kurt, welcome. Evan, thank you so much for being here. Guy, welcome. Charles, hello. Appreciate everyone being here, as always. Uh, you can always check out PassportToTheParks.com. I always appreciate that. Follow on my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you haven't subscribed here on YouTube, I really would appreciate it if you would do so and hit that bell icon. You can be uh, notified anytime I go live and post any kind of cool videos. Uh, Dan, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. John, Chris, good morning. Everybody's coming on now. Sheila Wallace Photography, morning. Uh, staying there on your July trip. Awesome. You're going to love it here. Uh, you're coming in quick now. Everybody's coming in. Candy, Heather, uh, Ben, hello. Uh, Eric, hello. Tim, Colin from the uh, UK. Awesome. Tim is cold in Nova Scotia. Sorry to hear that. All right, let me turn you around. We'll take a uh, quick look at the Caribbean Beach Station. I always like to start on the uh, the long side, I'll call it here, so you can see the entire back of the station, see what it looks like, some of the uh, construction that's going on. Not a whole lot to see on this side. Uh, there's still really no testing or anything going on either the uh, pop and uh, Art of Animation side or the, the side going to the Riviera and Epcot. Uh, they are running gondolas back and forth uh, through Hollywood Studios, saw that coming in. They're going to be doing that pretty much constantly and then they'll start adding lines. I'm pretty much assuming that the next line should be the, uh, the Pop and Art line and then the uh, Riviera and Epcot line should be uh, the last in line there. I'm Oswald from the Netherlands. Awesome. Are you really from the Netherlands? Uh, that's awesome. My heritage is uh, from Norway. so. Always love, uh, always love Norway. Hey Joe, welcome, good morning, always good to have you here. Hey George's Life, thank you for being here. Disney Dave, hey welcome, Gareth uh, from the UK, awesome. Gonna be, uh, let's see, in the UK after a week at uh, Caribbean Beach, great resort. Elvin, any chance, uh, opening the legs earlier uh, again Disney is still saying the fall they haven't changed that uh, we can just tell by some of the progression here that it may be a little earlier but who knows uh, I'm always looking for soft openings maybe at the end of the summer which would be really really awesome do you think they're going to open in the end of July I don't think uh, end of July is is feasible um, they, they really do still have a lot to do they need to open up both these other lines there's constant testing what they're doing now on the other side, I'm gonna walk a little bit here. Hey Brian, welcome. David, good morning. Uh, anyways, what they're what they're doing over at Hollywood Studios now is they're just doing line space testing. So uh, I've seen some some other videos online saying that they're doing full load tests. They're they're not doing a full load test yet. It's it's only line spacing and like emergency stop procedures, those kind of things. So they're basically testing uh, the spacing between each gondola, how they enter the station, uh, the different speeds, the variables, uh, and they're adding gondolas. Now there's more gondolas on the line now. Uh, there's pretty much what we saw before in the beginning was about one gondola in, in between each tower. So what I saw this morning is it looks like there are up to about two gondolas in between each tower. That's going to be what we're going to see probably more on a normal basis. Uh, Disney may try to push that to a uh, to a three gondola spacing. Uh, not 100% sure if they are going to do that or not. They obviously want to try to get as many people on board as possible. So I'm sure they're going to you know, they're gonna try different techniques and stuff to figure out what they can do to get uh, as many people on. But on a normal basis, you're probably gonna see what we see here, which is about two gondolas in between each tower.
Nice shot of the Riviera. Now what the, uh, the Doppelmayr D-Line is capable of is about 4,500 to 5,000 people an hour. I have a feeling that Disney is probably going to try to push that a little bit, if it's possible. So we'll see once they, uh, once they really start going here, what the gondola spacing will be and the speed of the gondolas coming in, in and out of the station, things like that. Take a quick look up here. Try to catch up on some of these uh, comments standing here. JW Dasso, uh, there in August, maybe. Uh, it's going to be really, really hot in August, but I hope you definitely make it here. Uh, Elvin, coming in uh, July, your daughter's graduation. Awesome. Peter, hey, uh, going to be at uh, Walt Disney World in less than three weeks. Sweet. Definitely got to let me know when you get here. Denise, hey, from uh, Massachusetts, 81 days for you. David, uh, just checking in. Love your live feeds. Planning a 2020 trip. Gonna have a ton of stuff open in 2020. Lisa Warden, photographer, staying there at the end of September, hoping the gondolas are open then. Uh, September could be a very, very good time for them to be open. I, I mean, they're saying the fall, September, October is kind of what I would be projecting. Uh, is it Way Res? Sorry, I lost you here. Way Res 8935 just ordered a special Dooney and Burke Magic Band. Sweet. Uh, Joe staying at the uh, Caribbean at the end of April. Hey, Matt, welcome. Faye and Casey, always good to have you here. Uh, yes, wishing me a happy birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow is my birthday. Natalie Hay from the UK. Rick, uh, coming to Oak Key West, first time in November. Oak Key West is awesome. You're really going to love it there. Sharon, your reports on the Skyliner have been fascinating and very informative. Thank you so much. Can't wait uh, to get back from the UK sometime to ride them. I do hope you get here soon. Well, at least by the fall, because they, they'll be open in the fall. All right, let's, uh, let's keep moving on. I'm not going to cut through the grass here. It's just uh, it's too busy, so we have to walk through Jamaica. Kind of a pain in the neck for now but uh, eventually they're gonna open up this walkway. And I'm gonna show you once we get on the other side uh, that my theory is pretty much confirmed uh, about the bus station. So we'll take a nice, beautiful walk through Jamaica. It is gorgeous here today. This is absolutely a perfect day. Um, it's a beautiful breeze here. It's about 65 degrees right now. It's only supposed to get up into the mid 70s today. Uh, gorgeous, like no clouds in the sky. There's no rain, nothing expected for today. So these are the, the perfect days that you really, really wish for when you come to Disney. It's always a great time to be here during the winter. It gets a little cooler at night, but you get these really, really gorgeous days that the, uh, the sun is really not killing you and the heat isn't killing you here. So this is one of the, uh, the things that is kind of a pain in uh, the Caribbean beach is you gotta wind your way around through these areas sometimes through the islands. Sometimes there's really not a direct way to get through. I guess they didn't have live feeds and bloggers in mind though when they designed these buildings, so I can't fault them for that. But here we go on the other side. So this is the, uh, the walkway that they've been working on. I don't know if we'll be able to see it from this angle, but right across the street, 
me zoom in a little bit. Hey, Wayrez8935, uh, thank you so much for the super chat, 499. Happy birthday, thank you, I really, really appreciate that. Absolutely, my friend, thank you so much, I appreciate that a lot. Let me zoom in though, right in that area there, that is fully paved. There's a fully paved turnaround that leads uh, right over to this structure that they've been building. Where's it at? Right there. And that is, I'm pretty much 99.9% .9 sure that that is absolutely going to be a bus stop now. Uh, they have it all paved, so we know that the buses are just going to wrap right around there. Uh, more, most likely an internal shuttle, which is an awesome, awesome thing because it's a, it's a pretty far walk when you're getting over from like Martinique and um, um, I blanked out over there. What else is over there now? Barbados, those kind of things. So Aruba should be all right because you should be able to jump on over at the, uh, the Riviera station. Jamaica's fine because it's right here. But they definitely, uh, they definitely need the bus stop here. I get a better view of it. But that is now all paved uh, in front of it, and there's a, it comes right out, uh, right out there. So that'll be really, really awesome. And in the distance there, you can see the, the gondola is moving back and forth between the Caribbean beach and Hollywood Studios. Lucy's life. George was happy when I commented on the YouTube channel. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, check that out. She does a great job over there. So, John, does uh, Disney have their own construction companies that build? Uh, where'd you go here? Jumping around. Construction companies that build the resorts and attractions, or they hire companies to do the work. Uh, they hire outside contractors for the most part. Um, actually, there's a, a, a guy who comes on. His name is Vance. Comes on here all the time. Really, really cool guy. He's from uh, Tucker Paving. And they're actually working here at the Caribbean Beach. Uh, so all the, uh, all the crews really, really do some amazing work when they're here. Uh, always appreciate it for what they do, but it's mostly outside contractors. Uh, Disney has some maintenance and stuff that they do in-house, but for the most part, um, they, they do hire people and bring them in for the, uh, for the work here. Awesome, we got some more Super Chats coming in. David, thank you so much. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, $5. Uh, I'm Oswald from the Netherlands. Thank you so much, 549. I truly, truly appreciate the Super Chats. I, truly from the, the depths of my heart, uh, it's so awesome that you guys would even think about doing that. Um, I still don't have words. I'm not good at thank you. So it just, you know, thank you so much when you do send the Super Chats. It really, really means a lot and it really does help to uh, support trying to get back and forth here and everything. Candy, do all the parks join together in one way or another? Uh, there's transportation pretty much between all the parks via bus or uh, water taxi or what will soon be the, uh, the Skyliner here, monorail. So you can pretty much get park to park from anywhere. Mike, I've lived in Orlando and it's currently 70, just checked. Uh, the, the temperature's rising a little bit as we get closer to, to the mid-afternoon here. Lynn, uh, how's the weather in October? Uh, I love the fall weather. It's when I used to travel down here from Ohio. We'd always used to come in the fall. Uh, it's about the most perfect weather you can get. Let's see, Patches, uh, Patches Lee, where'd you go? So every time I read a comment, the uh, more come in and they, it jumps around on me. If you see, uh, you hear during the day, I'm poking my head out the door. Oh, are you actually here now? That's pretty awesome. I hope you're having a great stay if you're here. Hey Jack, welcome. Scott, love the Caribbean Beach. Uh, no elevators, but no elevators in No Bueno, uh, no bueno especially uh, when you bring the, the kiddos. Um, yeah, I guess there's no elevators uh, to get up to the, uh, to the secondary levels for these, at least not that I've seen. I'm not sure if any of the buildings don't have them or some of them do. Um, never really checked that out here, so. Michael, uh, do you know if there's a plan to uh, paint the posts uh, that go away green color? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. You know, it's been something we've always talked about. We'd all love to see some color, at least going through the Caribbean beach here. I would love to see some whimsical colors on these towers. 
You know, there's like four towers going through the Caribbean here, four or five towers. I think they deserve a little splash of color. I think uh, people will be a little more happy with seeing this go through the Caribbean beach. I don't think there's any issues with going through Pop and Arts, going through the parking lot at the boardwalk, going into the International Gateway. Uh, a lot of people really have some, uh, some thoughts about the towers going through here at the Caribbean beach. So we'll see. I have not heard anything specific on whether or not they're going to do that. But uh, fingers crossed, I hope that they do. So we're going to head over to the bus station. We'll jump on a bus. We'll head over to Hollywood Studios. This is the Jamaica bus station that we'll jump on. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll catch a bus in a short amount of time here. I did this before and waited about uh, 15 or 20 minutes for a Hollywood Studios bus to come by. So hopefully we'll have better luck today. You can see there is a lot of construction vehicles, a lot of cement vehicles over here in the parking lot between Jamaica and uh, the Skyliner. So just some things you'll have to deal with if you are staying here at the Caribbean Beach. I'm sure Vance is around here somewhere. He's usually working over here at the Caribbean Beach. Oh, it's a little loud behind me. some kind of cement behind me. Hey, Rick C, happy birthday. Eat a funnel cake, $5 from Rick C. Awesome, my friend, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the, uh, the early birthday wishes too. I really, really appreciate that. I'm definitely gonna try to go live tomorrow for my birthday. Chris, those uh, bus delay times are why I'm excited for the Skyliner. Yeah, it's, it's really, really going to help here, especially because there's all the multiple stops through here, through the Caribbean Beach. So even when, when you do ride the bus, you have to go through the multiple stops, and it's kind of time-consuming. So the Skyliner is going to cut down uh, tremendously on the amount of time that it takes to especially get over to Hollywood Studios. Let's go in here and check out the, the board and see what kind of time we're looking at. Let's see, Hollywood Studios' next bus is at 12.11. So uh, we're gonna have about six or seven minutes to wait. So we'll swing back around to the other side. We can at least, yeah, uh, we can see it right here. We can watch some gondolas go back and forth. So I'm trying to see some of the spacing from here and I'm still seeing, yeah, they might've brought it back down to the, to the one gondola between the towers. When I was driving in, I was, I was watching, it was just one gondola was leaving the tower and another one was coming uh, on. So they're, they're gradually, slowly, um, you know, putting the space closer and closer. This is all just testing phases. Uh, this, again, this is not a load test, this, they're just, testing spacing they're seeing you know how fast they can get these gondolas going how quickly they can get them through the station how far apart they can have them on the haul rope those kind of things to, to operate safely it's a process we're going to see this for for quite a while pauline can't wait to be here evan do all the resorts have bus wait times uh in the app uh you know i, I have not looked in the app for bus wait times i'm not sure they, most of them have gone to these screens so now they just uh, up the next bus to 1213. So we're running a little further behind. Hello. Oh, really? Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's the one going to Hollywood Studios. Yeah, that's Hollywood Studios. International Gateway is this way through the Riviera. And then Pop Century and Art of Animation is down that way. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate that.
Okay. Yeah. Joe, 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 thank you again so much. $50 from Joe, happy birthday. Joe, that means so much to me. I, you are very, very generous. I, I can't tell you how generous you are. I truly appreciate that. Uh, Cammy goes nuts every time she sees it, so. But thank you for the, uh, the early birthday wish. Really, really means a lot, thank you. Susan, absolutely, it's a, uh, it's a beautiful day. Jeffrey, good morning from Utah. James, uh, Jamaica and me, uh, crazy beautiful weather. Scott can be in Hollywood Studios next Tuesday. William, love the chats you're doing. Chats you're doing. Uh, I'm a cast member at Magic Kingdom, doing a great job. Love hearing from you. That is awesome. Thank you for doing such an amazing job. Cast members, love you guys. You guys do awesome work. You take care of everybody that comes uh, through Disney. Uh, I know it's a, it's very hard work. It's very hot, strenuous, whatever you do. Um, you got to put up with a lot of stuff, so it's always appreciated. I think uh, I think I speak for a lot of people when I say you guys do really, really great work. So thank you. Peter, you, we uh, utilize the services of Living with the Magic Vacations for your suggestion. Awesome. I'm really happy to hear that. I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that they did a great job for you. Really great people over there. Greg, can't wait uh, less than three more months until you move. Looks gorgeous there today. Uh, that is awesome. I can't wait for you to move down here. Um, you know, we did it five years ago and don't regret it. There is absolutely some hard times. Uh, you're going to go through some struggles when you're here, but it is totally worth it. You know, anytime you can come and you can experience this every day and do this kind of stuff, um, just totally awesome. Mike, my friend, $20, happy birthday, super chat. Thank you so much, my friend. Your information is invaluable. Uh, it was really awesome meeting you the other day. Uh, I truly appreciate that, but thank you so much for the super chat and thank you for the happy birthday. Uh, always great talking to you. Steve, I'm a new viewer. I just wanted to say thanks for the construction updates. You're very welcome. I uh, have a great time doing them, so uh, stay tuned. We're just waiting on a Hollywood Studios bus. We're gonna head over there and uh, really get a good look at these gondolas coming through. Okay. Going to uh, Hollywood, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Joseph, what's the temperature there today? Uh, somebody told me it was just around 70 now. It's about 65 when I started this morning. It's only supposed to get up into the mid 70s today. Uh, it's gorgeous, beautiful breeze. Uh, the sun is shining, but it's not that treacherous Florida feeling sun today. It's just, it's beautiful. Uh, I wore my, uh, my passport hat today, so I'm not going to get sunburned again. I got really, really roasted the other day when I was out in the parking lot with these gondolas. Um, but you can check out the passport to the, park, passport to the parks hat there. Uh, I have been working on getting some merchandise, some shirts and uh, all that kind of great stuff. I'll have that available soon if you guys are interested. I've people have been emailing me, commenting, saying, "Oh yeah, I want some shirts and some hats and all that great stuff." So I'll get some cool stuff out, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun with it. So here comes a Disney Springs bus. I'm sure we're going to see every single park than the one that I actually want to go to. That's usually how the buses work. I'm sure you've all experienced that. Wherever you're going is always the last bus. You'll see like two or three buses for every single park. And you know, your bus is never the one. It's just the, the luck of the draw. But I love riding the buses. Everything uh, computer, hey from Canada. Very exciting, thank you so much. Uh, Wayrez, uh, have I seen the menu for the Toledo? Yeah, somebody asked me the other day. I, in fact, I think I have that up on my website at passporttotheparks.com. Um, and the menu looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it, it looks very, very tasty, and I know it's going to be amazing, but the food looks gorgeous. I mean, almost too good to eat. Uh, so definitely, definitely look into that. You can look it up, and it's just going to be gorgeous, gorgeous food, uh, something that, you know, you're just going to want to take a picture of and probably not eat, but of course you're going to because I'm sure it's going to taste amazing too. The Toledo is the tower at, uh, there's the internal shuttle. 
That is the uh, one that I'm assuming will, will make the stop at the new bus station over there in front of the Caribbean Beach. And you can see the roof of that bus station right there. But again, the, uh, the Toledo is the new restaurant that's going on top of the tower over at Coronado Springs. Joe, I know you're looking forward to the, uh, the hats and t-shirts. I, I truly am working on that. We'll get that going as soon as I possibly can. Theme park, New England. Awesome, New England theme park, sweet. Hey from uh, Boston, love Disney. Uh, just can't wait for the Star Wars land this fall. Uh, you, me, and everybody. I think the line is already starting. It's backed up all the way to the, uh, to the Georgia, Florida line. Uh, people waiting to get on board for that. So it's gonna be amazing. Uh, the Skyliner is a huge, huge part of that. It's one of the major reasons they're actually building the new transportation is because that Star Wars land is going to just bring in huge amounts of people and they need the infrastructure in place. That's why everything is happening over at Hollywood Studios. The, the new entrance, the, the larger parking area, the new bus stops, uh, all the new uh, security procedures. They're expanding the whole front entrance. They're building the new tram stations in front. So Hollywood Studios is just getting a complete kick in the pants and it's going to be awesome, all for Star Wars. Uh, that's how popular it is. And again, they're, they're improving all kinds of infrastructure all over, all over uh, property uh, to gear up for 2021. You know, all the major things that are happening, Tron, Ratatouille, Guardians of the Galaxy, the space restaurant, the, all the new resorts that they're putting in, the transportation. So it's gonna be amazing. 2021 is going to be an absolute blast. Lucy, Georgia is famous. Yeah, very, very cool. She does uh, some cool makeup tutorials over there. That uh, was fun to watch over there, so keep, keep up the, uh, the great work. Greg, did you see the Skyliner pin uh, they had the other day at Caribbean Beach? Uh, no, I did not see it here. Somebody, was it you that, uh, that sent me the, the pin? I can't remember if it was you or somebody else, but they, they sent me the actual Skyliner pin, and it looks awesome, so I do want to find that, absolutely. So if you think it's here, I'm, I'm definitely going to check for that. Theme Park New England, how is the new Toy Story Land? Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, could it be, would I love it to be bigger? Absolutely. Uh, Slinky Dog, I think, is so, so cool. It's, it's an amazing thing to see go through. I'm not a roller coaster person, so I didn't ride it, but it's awesome to see. I love the, uh, the Alien Swirling Saucers. It's like one of my favorite rides. Cammie and I love, you know, knocking into each other when we're riding that thing. It spins you around, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but the overall theming of Toy Story Land is brilliant. Uh, you really, really, truly feel like you've been shrunk down. You're in Andy's backyard. Uh, it's bright. It's vibrant. Uh, it's a lot of fun to go through. You get the, the toy soldiers that come through all the time. Uh, Buzz, Woody. You can meet all the characters over there. The new uh, entrance for Toy Story Mania is awesome. So overall, they did a great job. So if that is just um, a hint of what they're going to do with Star Wars, I mean, look, look at what they did with Pandora. Pandora is brilliant. Star Wars is just going to be so much more than that, so much bigger, so much more in depth. Um, I mean, you're truly gonna feel like you're going to another planet and it's gonna be amazing uh, for any Star Wars fan or, or anybody who's even not a fan of Star Wars. It's just gonna be so much fun to go through there. The rides look amazing. Smuggler's Run, you get to pilot the Millennium Falcon. I mean, I've been wanting to do that since I was, you know, five years old when the movie first came out, so. Lucy, uh, she says, thank you very much. She loves my videos even more. That is a great compliment. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Haunting Live. Uh, let's, let's see here. Sorry, I got to go back. Haunting Live OGPS filming. Do you think that uh, everything will open on time? Uh, you know, it seems to be. The Skyliner seems to be right on schedule, if not maybe a little ahead of schedule. So I think they're doing a great job there. Um, as far as uh, like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Rail, I believe that is going to open uh, towards the end of the year. Star Wars seems to be on schedule. I uh, haven't heard anything about the delays. Um, so Disney seems to be doing pretty well with their, their scheduling here. All of the, uh, the Coronado Springs stuff is due to open in the early July. Restaurant and Tower, so everything looks to be, uh, looks to be on track for that. Do I like Ariana Grande? Uh, she's, she's okay. I mean, I like some of her music and 
Um, I liked her on, what was it, Sam and Cat? I used to watch Sam and Cat all the time with, uh, with my daughter, so. Serial of Toy Story Land is beautiful and well-made. Hope they expand it in the future. Like, add one more attraction or something. Uh, you know, I can go on and on about what I think they should do with Toy Story Land. Um, while we're standing here, I guess we can talk about it. I find myself waiting for the, the Hollywood Studios bus again. I, I think I have to find another way over to Hollywood Studios next time because I always wait like 15 minutes here. And, I'm, you know, I apologize to you guys for just standing around. But Toy Story Land, my opinion is, is that they should expand all the way between Toy Story Land and the uh, Rock and Roller Coaster and make an entire Pixar Land over there. Because Toy Story Land, if you go behind, it runs directly into um, the Star Wars Launch Bay. And you can continue all the way behind there as well, down Sunset Boulevard into the, uh, the Rock and Roller Coaster. So imagine, and plus they're built, they've already built, or they are in the process of building that, the Cars Lightning McQueen attraction that's gonna be back there by Rock and Roller Coaster. So shut down the launch bay because you're gonna have Galaxy's Edge open. Use that entire area and expand. So you have Toy Story Land, go into the launch bay and create like an awesome Monsters Inc. ride. Take like the ideas of like Transformers or Spider-Man, those, those big 3D adventure rides that they have like at Universal and do a, uh, do a Monsters Inc. attraction. And I say like, uh, like at the end where they're going through the closet doors and they're going through the factory and they're flying through everything. Could you imagine a big 3D simulator motion thing um, like Spider-Man or Transformers with the huge screens and everything around? Uh, I think that would be amazing. Here comes Hollywood Studios. And then continue on through the back Take, uh, take Rock and Roller Coaster, turn it into the Incredicoaster. And then eventually, uh, you know, you have the Lightning McQueen and just turn that all into a huge, huge Pixar area. I think that would be so much fun. Uh, maybe it's already in the works, who knows? Let's see if, uh, if we can jump on this Hollywood Studios bus. Looks like they're gonna open it up for us back here. Hey Jerry, how are you? Fine, how are you? I'm awesome. All right, we won't sit in the back. We won't do uh, Tim Tracker's King of the Bus. I will let him do that. Hey, it's Lance. Welcome, Lance. Appreciate you being here. Melody, bring the Radiator Springs to Toy Story Land. Um, that, you know, that's another possibility. That That's a pretty massive attraction, so I don't know if they could really fit something like that back there. I mean, they could, they can expand it and just make it a huge Toy Story Land back there. Um, but I, I'd like to see something original and, and incorporate something Monsters, Inc. in there, The Incredibles, and just do, do a whole Pixar concept over there. Zero, agree with you, Rob, a simulator that makes us uh, feel like they are toys inside Andy's house. Anything like that, I, you know, I think, Universal Studios is using that great technology if you've ever ridden anything over there. I rode Spider-Man, um, you know, a few weeks ago. And, you know, you're in a, mo you're in a car and you're going around and it's, it's spinning around, but it just makes you feel like you're, you're falling and dropping and spinning and, and all kinds of stuff. And I just think it would be an awesome experience to, to be cruising through there in that factory, in the door factory uh, at the end of Monsters, Inc. Joe, it's time to hitchhike. Yeah, I was just about to put my thumb there for a second. Yeah, they, the buses, you know, depending on what time of day it is, this is midday, so there's not a whole lot of people, so the buses will slow down for obvious reasons. Um, you know, in the, in the morning and at night when there's more people, the buses run definitely more frequently, so it is what it is. We just have to, uh, to take it for what it is. Randy, if they do a Monsters, Inc. ride, I hope it will be better uh, than the, what is that, the California Adventure. Yeah, I think they really could do something pretty amazing. The technology is out there to do it, so hopefully it's in the, in the works in the future. DJ Real, Disney needs uh, less animatronics and uh, simulators and more rides and a new water park. Uh, yes and no to that. I was, I was actually just talking the other day on a video that um, I get a little disappointed when Disney is trying to force all of the, the movies into the parks now. Like, I think Hollywood Studios is perfect. Make a Pixar land over there, use Monsters, Inc., Incredibles, all that stuff. But, you know, when they try to force 
Guardians of the Galaxy into Epcot just to put a roller coaster over there and put a thrill ride in there. I don't like that kind of stuff. I, I'm a true fan of the old Disney concept of coming up with something new. You know, they, they came up with the Pirates of the Caribbean. They came up with, uh, you know, the Haunted Mansion and Carousel of Progress and all these original concepts back then. And, you know, Disney's known for the animatronics. I love the animatronics. I love the dark rides, things like that. You know, do the thrill rides, but uh, put them in their prospective areas that they should go in. I, I think Epcot needs to be that, um, you know, that, that visionary park still and, and do things technology driven and just don't put a thrill ride in there for the, uh, for the heck of it. That's just my rant. Susan, I heard that too about uh, Monsters, Inc. Theme Park New England, when is uh, the best time to go to Disney without being uh, packed with crowds? Uh, this is actually a really good time to be here in the winter months, uh, January, February. Uh, there's been some times that I've gone here lately and it's been really, really low volume crowds. Uh, a lot of people like mid-afternoon will go back to the resorts uh, to try to get out of the sun. Uh, you're going to get more around fireworks times. Um, early in the morning, a lot of people start to pack into the parks. If you can get there like right at rope drop, you can usually hit some of the rides real quick. But I mean, there's no real formula as far as you know what the crowd levels are and when you're going to find heavy crowds or light crowds. It's, um, you know, people are just more and more people are just coming to Disney. It is what it is. They're building more resorts. They're building more transportation because there's so many people coming here and it's just something we're going to have to, to start to work around. The Disney Dude, hey, from New York. Thank you for being here. Zero, uh, Epcot is going to be amazing uh, soon. It's going to revive. I agree. I mean, I, I'm glad that they're doing things in Epcot. I'm glad that they're, you know, going to change everything around and, and bring it up to date. Um, I just... I just I don't like the throw ride concept of forcing throw rides in. Uh, I just think Guardians is out of place there. Um, my opinion is that they should have done mountains in the back. They could have done like a Mount Fuji or a, um, you know a bobsled ride or something back there. Put mountain ranges back in, in Japan or in Germany and things like that. I think it would work a lot better back there. Ratatouille I think is perfect for France because that's exactly where it should be. In order to make the most of your visit. George is going out with a famous person called Harvey Canswell. Uh, he's a singer. Have you heard of him? Unfortunately, I have not, but I will. Uh, I will check that out and see. Kim, love the updates on the sky, the Sky Glider. Well, that's cool. Sky Glider is a cool name. Uh, Skyliner, actually. Uh, what will be the next big project you follow once they open? Uh, you know, I'll start following Tron and Guardians and. Uh, Ratatouille. This this is just cool because there's so much that you can see. It's out in the open. You know, a lot of the other stuff is just buildings you can look at and some of the construction progress. So this is just more fun than anything because you know each day there's something exciting to see, especially now that the gondolas are starting to move. And this is going to be running for you know through the fall. And then there's going to be you know so much to do after that to see uh, you know all the different crowds and. Um, you know, how many Skyliners are going to run from different points and stuff like that. So I'll be following this for quite a long time. <laughs> DJ Real, a Dumbo ride will be incoming, mark my words. Uh, other than the actual Dumbo that's over there now, you think they're going to do something with the, uh, the live action Dumbo? That might be kind of cool. Whereas uh, Epcot is about to become uh, too east heavy. Uh, you know, that might be true. There's going to be, they're doing a lot of stuff over on the east with uh, that new pavilion that they're making, the new play pavilion they're calling it, the space restaurants. Um, that is going to be a pretty heavy side over there, so you're right. Uh, but they need it. There's, you know, Epcot has been so lackluster for a while. It used to be my favorite park, and now I love going to the Magic Kingdom just because there's so much more to do and the nostalgia of it, but Epcot used to be my favorite when it had Horizons and... Um, World of Motion and the original Dreamfinder and everything. That's that's when Epcot was at its heyday. That's when I really loved being there. Lance, Germany needs a ride. Absolutely. Put a put a mountain range back in Germany. Put the uh, put some bobsleds or something back there. I think that would be awesome. 
Be sure to ask your for the exact location. The hashtag squad, Bay Dowsing. Hope you're having a really uh, blast. Can't wait to come back. Can't wait for you to come back. That would be awesome. Gorgeous, gorgeous times here. I'm glad you're here. I appreciate it. Walkway to the main entrance. As you approach the entrance, please keep your party together. Thanks for riding with us. And have a picture perfect day here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. That Disney guy, Walt Disney World needs to open a fifth gate and call it IP Park. Uh, I agree with the fifth gate. Uh, I would probably see something after 2021. I wouldn't see, I doubt if we get an announcement uh, in the next coming years about a fifth gate. Um, you know, it's been a lot of talk about a Heroes Villains Park. I think that would be very cool. Uh, Marvel would actually be awesome, but you know, there's there's all the uh, the contract issues that they have with Universal that they can't use the characters. Whether or not that will actually turn back over to Disney's hands in the future, uh, we'll wait and see. That would be awesome. But a fifth gate, they, I mean, they need it. There's just so many people coming in, and they're you know they're building these lands, which are great, but they need they need more volume. They need more areas for people to go once they're here. Herschel, hey, welcome. Thank you for being here. Evan, what is the, what is the weather like mid-May? Uh, it starts to warm up. You're going to get into some warmer weather. Uh, it'll be warmer at night. There's going to be a lot of rain. April and May, uh, you're going to have a lot of rain. So you have to deal with that. But it will be hot. You're going to find like, like uh, mid-80s and even 90-degree weather. All right, so we finally made it over to Hollywood. This is the temporary bus stop. Thank you so much. The temporary bus stop, because uh, you can see they're actually building the new bus stops back there, and they are going to be really, really, really nice. They're going to blend completely in with the, uh, the new retro look that Hollywood has. Uh, it'll blend in with the Skyliner. They're doing a great job as far as incorporating the entire entrance now. Uh, it's going to look like one... Um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. <laughs> it's all going to work together, so it's all going to look great together. Maybe somebody can find a word for me here. Disney dude, love entering Epcot's International Gateway. I wonder how crowded it's going to be once the Skyliner is complete. Uh, again, I don't think the Skyliner is going to bring the massive crowds into the International Gateway like everybody is uh, fearing. Because, again, when you, when you look at the Skyliner and what it does, compare it to the monorail. When you're standing and you're waiting for the monorail, there's large, large groups of people that gather. And then they all get onto the monorail. And then once it gets to wherever it's going, it, all these people get off. So you get hundreds and hundreds of people at one time getting off. So it creates a massive crowd. The Skyliner is a completely different process. You have smaller groups of people moving at different intervals. Now, it's fast, you know, these people are gonna be getting off a lot, but it shouldn't create the massive amounts of congestion as you have when you have massive transportation letting off. Now, you'll see when the, uh, the boat transportation, I think, is worse than what the Skyliner will bring because the boat will drop off, you know, 100 people at one time, then you, it creates the backup. Skyliner's gonna be a constantly moving process so you'll have, you know, six, eight, ten people get off at one time. They'll, you know, be moving off and then another six to eight to ten people. So, plus from what I hear, they're going to do a little bit of expansion back there at International as well. I'm sure Disney's very aware of uh, the issues that are coming over at the International Gateway. So this is going to be all the new bus stop over here. Uh, there's a bunch of them. There's like four rows. So they're, they're going to have a lot of buses coming in out of here. I think it would be very cool if they actually brought some of the Arctic buses over here, the articulating buses, which are the bendy buses. Right now they only run out of the Magic Kingdom because that's where your largest volumes of people are. And none of the other bus stations are really set up to handle them. So hopefully Disney will uh, incorporate that here. Because again, it's all about Galaxy's Edge. You're going to have huge amounts of people and you're going to need to move these people uh, quickly. So the larger buses, I think, would be, would be a pretty good deal over here. So we'll see what happens. Looks like the uh, 
the gondolas have stopped moving for the time being. They do this every once in a while. They'll stop and they're probably doing some adjustments. They, they could be doing some work up in, in the station itself. Uh, they could be on lunch, who knows? Doppelmeyer is a, a really, really great company, a really family-oriented company as well. So they take really great care of their employees. So you can see right now, yeah, it still looks like we're just looking at the, the one gondola spacing. So this is not going to be uh, what we're gonna see on a normal basis. Most likely we're gonna see about two gondolas. So you see where this gondola is on the tower here? And that gondola behind it, that's just past the other tower. That one should probably in the end be just passing over that tower as this one is leaving. So probably about two gondolas in between each tower will be uh, most likely your normal operating mode um, maybe even a little tighter in heavy areas and again Disney is really gonna try to push to uh, to get as many people moved as possible so they're gonna they're gonna test the limits and see exactly what they can do hello how are you guys <laughs> you're on a live stream that's what's happening hey guys So, um, so that's what's happening now. This is, this is just line spacing. This is not a load test. Uh, they got a little ways to go before that. Everything happens in little stages. I love seeing the different colors now. Plus we can start to see some of the characters through the, uh, through the tarps. This is so very cool. There's Donald Duck. Oh, that is, oh, let's check that out. That is actually Scrooge McDuck up there. Let me zoom in. I really hope you guys can see that. That is a green gondola with Scrooge McDuck on it. Oh, that, that could seriously turn, that is absolutely, he's got the gold coins behind him. Oh, that is so awesome. That may seriously become my favorite gondola right there. I'm a huge, huge DuckTales fan from back in the day. I gotta get some pictures of this. Hang on, guys. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous thing right there. Sorry, I, I always uh, geek out with this kind of stuff. People call me out sometimes, say I'm overhyping some of this stuff, but sorry. That's just the way it is because it is so, so cool. Even just the little things, just seeing that Scrooge McDuck gondola totally made my day. So let's take a quick look here. We're gonna zoom in on this gondola, talk about it a little bit. So you can see right there on the, uh, the side is that lip. So that's, that's what's gonna go around and be even with the, uh, the inner track. So as the gondola goes around, um, there's not gonna be a step up into it or anything. So you're gonna be able to, to push a scooter right on board. No problem, very smooth getting on. Uh, the doors automatically open. I just did a video uh, showing how uh, the, the automatic doors work. Um, we also talked about the, uh, the power that's on board as well. But those doors automatically open and close. There's a device on the top. And I'll show you here real quick how that works. But uh, on the back portion here, just gonna kind of go over this again. You see right up at the, uh, at the top, this is the power supply. So that little silver box there is the battery supply box. So up on the top, right on the grip, there are two little mat, uh, black prongs that stick out. And on the bottom of those prongs are two um, silver plates. So as those plates go through into the track inside the station, it makes contact with uh, an electro, uh, electro, electrical wire in there and then it charges. There's a, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a tiny little black wire that runs down through the arm. It's not that thick black wire. That thick black wire is actually what controls the doors. But there's a, a small black wire that runs down into the arm, into that battery box. And every time it goes into the station, it charges that box. And that's what's going to give power to the onboard announcements, the interior lighting, uh, and maybe video cameras if they have that. Somebody even asked about exterior lighting. 
it's a, it's a huge possibility they could have exterior lights. Um, if you if you look online at some of the gondolas out there, they have really cool lights that go around the outside and everything. I mean, how gorgeous would that be? Seeing that, especially like over Hourglass Lake, the reflection of the gondolas in the water would be absolutely stunning. So just a really, really nice look at the gondola itself. Uh, there is a device up there that uh, operates the doors, and I'll show you, we'll walk a little further down here. Looks like there's one actually in the, uh, in the door opening device right here. So if we zoom in there, and you can watch the video that I already did on this, but I'll just kind of go over it again. That is the device that opens the door right there. So as that little roller slides through, there's a, there's a bar that's sticking up. Um, so as it comes into the station, it pushes that bar, that little lever up, and the, uh, the, the little hydraulics open up the door. It automatically opens the door. Then when it comes around to this side and it passes back through this, uh, this closer, as it slides through, that bar gets pushed down and then it closes the doors on the way out. So a very, very simple, just little hydraulic way to open and close the doors. Just some gorgeous, gorgeous looks here. We're gonna head over to uh, International Gateway as well. There's probably not gonna be much going on over there. They're, they ran the, uh, the service gondolas over there. Um, you know, they may have done a, a gondola test over there. I'm not 100% sure. I doubt if we'll see anything today, but they're, they're nowhere near doing any kind of this testing right now. Like I said, in my opinion, the, uh, the pop and art line is gonna be next. But just uh, just amazing view, seeing that down there. Just wait till these tarps come off in these gorgeous colors and that Scrooge McDuck gondola. I'm gonna have to time that somehow that I can get on that Scrooge McDuck gondola. That is so, so cool. It's a nice, pretty blue gondola in there. I love the different colors. I really only thought there was gonna be a few colors. It's like green and red and yellow. But I'm seeing all kinds of different colors, purple and blue, but just gorgeous. Hey Mike, the track does move out of the way for the gondolas uh, to go to the secondary loading. Oh, so back here, yeah, so there's a secondary loading back here. That's where the, uh, the scooters and everything would load. So you see the gondolas currently are going around the front track. And then there's a rear track back here. So secondary gondolas will come back here where they can actually be stopped in order for scooters, uh, larger strollers, those kind of things to be, to be loaded. So uh, the gondolas in the front will stay at a very, very slow pace. So you just walk on board. Uh, the gondolas in the back can be stopped if needed to, uh, to load the scooters on. Uh, Mike, how many gondolas are in there at the, at the moment? Right now I see one, two, three, four. There might be one on the other side I didn't see. Uh, five. There are five. There's, there's one in the front here. There's these three that we see up front here, one, two, three, and then there's two on the other side. So it looks like there's five in there. Chris, that will be the main line. Uh, people waiting for the gondola in particular. Hey, how are you? Great. Awesome. Time. Yes. Thank you so much. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Chris, uh, what were you saying here? That would be the main line because uh, people waiting for the gondola, like for like a particular car, like in the roller coasters. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to, to pick and choose so much when you're in there, but they will have the, the secondary line where they can stop gondolas for, for special needs. That Disney guy, what's the weight limit? Um, I believe the, uh, the D line is right around 87 tons, I believe was, was the last that I heard. Whether or not uh, with the towers and everything that they built here, these are, these are some, some heavier towers. Uh, but the last I knew that the uh, the braking tension on the haul rope was 87 tons, uh, which was it's a huge amount. I I forget what the math was, but it's like it's like 500,000 pounds or something like that. 
so that's why I think Disney, you know, Disney's going to push the limits as far as what they can definitely run at one time. Uh, the capabilities are there. So let's keep on, let's keep moving. Uh, we're going to jump on the uh, water taxi. We'll head over to uh, International Gateway. We'll check out over there. At least we can see the uh, progress on the station over there. Like I said, we're most likely not going to see gondolas going in and out. They, they probably still have the test gondola inside. If they run it around the track, maybe bring it a little out on the haul rope. But I uh, haven't been over there in a little while, so it'll just be fun to take the ride over there and check it out. Happy birthday. So right here, uh, I believe these are going to be the new tram station that they're building. And again, they're doing a lot of expansion up here. You're going to see a lot of security expansion. Um, they're just going to make it easier for massive amounts of people to get in. Right now, the trams are dropping off down this walkway. So you, you drop off way on the other side and walk over here. Uh, the trams are going to move up here and it looks like there's going to be a covered tram entrance. So that is very, very cool. Whether or not this will also be part of, uh, you know, new security, uh, new entrance, we'll see. There's the uh, friendship boat over there right now. I don't think I'm going to be quick enough. They're actually leaving, so we'll take our time to get over there. Uh, this station still needs a lot of work. It doesn't seem like they're doing a lot of exterior work on this yet, but you can see the, uh, the loading right there. You can see one of the ramps that goes up. That most likely is going to be the... Uh, the ramp that you'll be coming off of when you get off of the gondola to come in. But we'll, uh, let me see a couple more comments here. Mike, uh, about 2,300 pounds per gondola. There we go. David says 174,000 pounds. Chris, uh, uh, let me jump back here. Sorry, my comments jump all around. Oh, Mike put a uh, link for the uh, the power contact on there if you guys want to check that out. I'll have to check that out later. A uh, really, really cool concept, though. I never knew that. Mike filled me in on that, uh, about how those those batteries charge as they go through the station. Um, it just sounds very, very cool. It's a great idea. And, you know, could that possibly gear up for air conditioning in the future? I mean, the power supply is there. Um, could Disney be planning something? Who knows? Again, they, you know, the announcement is, is there's no air conditioning on board, but they do have power. Uh, there's ventilation underneath. You can see the vents that are actually underneath the gondolas, uh, which would definitely give the capability for putting air conditioning units under there. Uh, so who knows? Who knows what they're going to do? Uh, I don't think it's going to be really that big of a deal. You've seen how fast these are moving. Again, the seven meters a second is the normal D-line speed and that equals about 15 and a half miles an hour uh, we've seen these gondolas and how fast they're going i don't think people really realized it until we've actually seen it um, but saying all along it's going to be a fast run especially between hollywood and caribbean uh, it's probably going to be less than a minute to get from from caribbean beach over here at hollywood studios once you get on board so you're not going to be in these gondolas long enough to you know fry in a hot box like everybody is so worried about the ventilation is going to be very nice on board uh, it's a natural ventilation. The air is going to go flowing through. They may even have some little fans in there as well. Who knows? Um, but I don't think it's something we're going to have to really worry about. But, you know, the, the technology could be there in the future for them to put the air conditioning if it's not already in the works right now and Disney's just holding back on us. Uh, there are other gondolas that exist out there that actually have air conditioning and heat on board. So the technology does exist. And Disney uh, is already proving so far that they are not uh, holding back on what they're, they're spending on these gondolas. I think they're really, really pushing the limits as far as how great they want to make this. It's going to be awesome. Uh, definitely a thumbs up for what Disney's trying to accomplish here. They definitely want to make a mark on the industry as well. Like I said, with, uh, with what they're trying to do, the amount of people that they want to, to get back and forth, uh, these gorgeous gondolas, the stations themselves, you know, the, the design of the stations is totally unique to Disney. Doppelmeyer has some, uh, some pretty amazing stations out there, uh, you know, that, like glass windows and they have electronic images on the outside and everything. But I think Disney was right on the money when they decided to, you know, build each station to the characteristic of each park.
Spencer, the family is heading out uh, for a trip starting September 28th. What are the odds the Skyliner is running by then? Uh, may even have a soft launch. Uh, I keep saying I'm looking for soft openings in August. You know, I don't have a specific word on that. Disney is only announcing the fall. But um, I think you could have a, a very good shot. You know, anywhere September, October, I think would be a good uh, projection date for this uh, for this to open. So soft openings in August, I think would be very, very cool. David, uh, 87 tons, 174,000 pounds. Uh, if two 300 pounds per gondola, or sorry, 2,300 pounds per gondola, 75 cars max. Uh, yeah, that would be definitely the full load. Um, my projection would be about 50 cars between each line. So on a full load, that's what it would be capable of, your 87 tons. So that's, that's what the D-line is capable of doing. Uh, whether or not they're gonna run that, it, all the time most likely not uh, we're probably going to see i would say probably about 50 cars uh, like on the hollywood the pop century line maybe a little bit more obviously because you have a longer line going to riviera and epcot but thanks for doing the math on that i appreciate that colin thanks for the stream uh, the shelter built there is most likely for security bag check uh, tram stop will be back a bit further okay uh, it seems pretty large uh, for all the new security. So I'm really, really hoping that the trams are gonna probably stop on the other side, but I do think that is part of the tram stop over there. Uh, I definitely know that they are expanding security as well. So it's probably all gonna be incorporated in there that we're gonna see pretty much a new entrance. And you can see how much further it actually expanded up. So with all the transportation that they're building, Skyliner, the buses and everything, uh, they're moving the entrance a little further out here to, to meet up with all the transportation. Uh, hubs that they're building over here. Richard, uh, have you heard if the uh, TTC and the Animal Kingdom are going to be getting a gondola station? I think it would be uh, smart for transportation options. This is, I mean, this is the first phase of the gondola. Disney has not announced anything in particular as far as multiple phases. Tons of speculation out there. Um, I think if they were to do a phase two, it would go through Coronado Springs to the Animal Kingdom. Uh, you also have the All-Stars over there, which is another huge resort that could use, you know, secondary transportation. Um, but I think the Animal Kingdom would be sort of a phase two scenario. Um, we might even see some things out of the Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is a the, the highest volume park, so they have a ton of transportation that goes out of there already. So, you know, could you see gondolas coming from the Magic Kingdom? to other parks, maybe direct lines to Hollywood Studios, um, to different resorts. Who knows, Disney Springs could also be a line that they would run. Uh, nothing set in stone, but I think if all goes well with the uh, the current gondola system, you're gonna see definitely some expansion in the future. Larry, uh, moving the security checkpoint out. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're definitely uh, expanding the entrance out here, which is, is greatly needed. Um, everything's being done for the, uh, the high volume crowds that they're bringing in. Charles, I would like to see a phase two connected to Disney Springs. I just, you know, Disney Springs just doesn't have the volume, the, the crowd volume to warrant it going over there, at least not in a phase two. Um, you know, there's enough transportation that goes over there now. Disney Springs doesn't have the, the mind-boggling crowds that you would have coming out of the theme parks. So eventually they may do it, but you're going to see probably Animal Kingdom, and I would even say probably a Magic Kingdom line before you would see a, uh, before anything going over to uh, Disney Springs. Hey, Resort TV One. Hey there. Uh, awesome. It was nice to meet you the other night at the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, it was so cool to see you guys over there. I've been talking about you guys uh, on my streams as well. Uh, a lot of fun. You guys do great work. I'm sure you guys all know uh, Resort TV One. Check them out. A lot, a lot of fun. They do awesome live streams. So uh, I got to meet them the other night, and it was very, very cool. So I appreciate you being here, guys. Uh, it's a great Disney day. Disney Springs would be great. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I love Disney Springs, too. They did an amazing job over there. Uh, but again, I don't think the crowd levels really warrant it for now. If Disney's looking at the logistics of where they need to move people in and out of, they're going to stick 
primarily with the theme parks. That's just an opinion. Michael, uh, what about uh, a line from AK to Animal Kingdom Lodge and Kidani? Yeah, if they did the line over there, I definitely think uh, the Animal Kingdom would be part of that line. Even if they just did the line from Animal Kingdom Lodge over to um, to the Animal Kingdom, and they didn't run the line, you know, directly from like Caribbean Beach or whatever over there, I think a, a nice little short line back and forth between the uh, park and the resort would be a nice benefit for them over there. Lori's bits and pieces. Uh, hey, Resort TV One. I'm watching while working at my desk. Awesome. Charles, an advantage of going to Disney Springs would relieve a lot of the buses. Uh, it could. You know, you're going to relieve a lot of bus transportation coming over here to Hollywood Studios, absolutely. And that's uh, the ultimate goal is, you know, you want to cut back on your, you know, your carbon footprint. Um, a lot of the, the staff that it takes for the buses. You're not going to see the buses completely, totally shut down. I mean, that is not going to happen you're, you're constantly going to have to keep these buses running because you know if the gondolas go down at any point there's people that are not going to want to ride the gondolas just for the sheer fear of heights so you're always going to have buses running and again uh and again it's just an opinion disney springs just doesn't have the volume i think for this yet uh we're gonna we're gonna see an animal kingdom run i would think before we would see the the disney springs run now, i could be totally wrong they could be you know plotting it right now and drawing it on a map who knows Hey, Gator Mickey, thanks for being here. Always good to have you here. Steve and I agree, getting out Animal Kingdom takes so long on the buses. David uh, agreed, all four parks should uh, eventually have the Skyliner option. Resort TV, absolutely, we'll have to meet up again soon. Uh, we'll definitely have to hook that up, it was a lot of fun. Spencer, thanks, Rob. You're awesome for answering these questions. You are very, very welcome. Anything I can try to answer, uh, and if I don't know the answer, I will definitely figure it out and try to give you in a future video. So always keep watching. And I try to answer comments when I can as well. So if you have more questions, you can always leave them in the comments, and I'll try to get uh, answers for you and, and comments. You know, I try to get the best information I can. I got a lot of great people who you know, know a lot about these things. So I try to give you quality information and not just, you know, shoot from the hip stuff. Hi folks, welcome aboard. Just hey, step. thank you so much. Uh, I've truly personally learned a lot. We'll go to the back here. Let's see if we can fit here. Do you mind if I sit here? You okay, thanks. We we'll get some awesome views. It's beautiful. Resort TV One. Any word on the proposed hourly uh, hourly capacity for this? Uh, right now, the the B line is capable of 4,500 to 5,000 people an hour. That's what Disney is uh, projecting. Now there are some uh, some things floating around out there that Disney may be looking at pushing the limits on that to see if the you know they're working on line spacing, they're working on the speed of the gondolas. Could they try to up that number over 5,000? Uh, it's Disney. You know they're they're going to try to make a statement with this. There's you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, it's, it's no good, expand the monorail and all this. this. This is the future. This is the way to move a lot of people. It's a great idea, and I think Disney is going to want to come out here and make a statement with it. So uh, could we see over 5,000 people an hour? Uh, absolutely. At the peak times, uh, we could definitely see that, um, if, if that indeed is what their, their plans are. But on a normal basis, uh, 4,500 people will probably be what we'll be looking at, but it's capable of 4,500 to 5,000 an hour. Disney Nerd Herders missed my notification somehow. I'm sorry about that. I'm glad you're here now. <coughs> sorry about that. I had to cough. Angela, hey Rob, uh, happy early birthday. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I wonder if they may be looking at having electric buses to help with the carbon footprint. Uh, wow, electric buses in the future. If the, uh, the technology comes, uh, they will definitely look at it. I, I guarantee you that. From what I've heard that they're actually looking at doing the electric cars for the, uh, the speedway now. Uh, instead of the uh, the gasoline cars, uh, when they do the remodel for Tron, I've heard that they're going to do electric cars over there. Maybe uh, Resort TV, what's your 
Have you heard about that electric car deal over for uh, for the, the Speedway? Do you know anything about that? You guys are always uh, over at the Magic Kingdom there. Steven, do I know the capacity of the boats and monorails per hour? Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I don't know those numbers. Uh, that's something I'll have to look into, maybe do some comparisons. Zero, love to watch it on Resort TV. Absolutely, guys. Gotta love Resort TV. Check them out. We are on our way back towards Epcot, making our resort stop along Charles, the current buses run on natural gas instead of diesel. Uh, I do believe you're right. I, I think they actually create... Um, I think they uh, they, they take uh, their waste from here. Um, what I mean by waste is, you know, our waste. And they actually turn that into fuel. So I have heard that, and that is very, very cool on their part if they're trying to do some things to uh, save our future. God bless Disney for that. Larry, any word of Disney plans uh, combining parties into one gondola to increase uh, the throughput or let two parties ride alone? I think in uh, the heavy times in you know the park exits, it'll be like the monorail. You'll be riding with, with different people depending on the number of parties, the number of people in your party. Uh, Ten passengers is what the gondolas are designed for. So, you know, if you have a family of six or eight, are they going to squeeze one other person in there? Who knows? Probably not. But on a normal basis, it'll probably be just your party, your family, getting back and forth. Like, like right now when it's not too busy during the afternoon. But when everything's letting out and you have, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 people that need to get out of here, uh, you're, you're going to be riding with uh, some people you don't know, which is fine. Having conversations with people from all over the world is what makes riding Disney transportation so much fun. Resort TV one, I just heard rumors about it, but nothing definite. The issue would be uh, better keeping them charged or safety issue uh, when electrifying the track. Yeah, that, that's true as well. I just think just for the overall, again, we're talking about carbon footprint here. Uh, would I miss the gasoline smell over there? Yeah, I've known that smell since I was a kid. And the noise and everything, but I think just to keep in in tune with what they're doing in Tomorrowland, I think an electrical car and to, to design it to sort of theme in with Tron a little bit, give it some neon, and uh, just update a little bit, I think would be really, really cool. Because originally that was the concept when it was in, you know, originally here it was, you know, the Autotopia, I think it was called. And, it was, you know, the, the futuristic form of transportation and things like that, and it was, it was very cool. So they need to keep updating that, especially in Tomorrowland. Chris, go forth. Uh, Tesla would be a great sponsor if they want to use electric cars in the Speedway. There you go. Now we're thinking. Angela, we have some electric buses in the main city in Newcastle, England. They do uh, small runs around 10 to 20 minute routes. Uh, so the technology is out there, but the cost will possibly be an issue. Yeah, right now I don't think the uh, they would be looking at that. That could be you know 10 years down the road once they get that technology. I definitely think uh, Disney will be on the forefront of doing those kind of things. Plus, I think they would look so cool. Electric buses, I bet you they look awesome. Resort TV One, uh, I think it would be a better fit with Tron without the loud gasoline engines for sure. Yeah. I think they could incorporate a whole area over there. I think it'd be very, very cool. We're gonna go, we're gonna stop where we were against the scene. They might be able to uh, swap out battery packs quickly somehow, like a Tesla type thing. I mean, there, it's totally possible. Even we were just talking about the technology with the gondolas. They have uh, the battery pack on board, which would be the same concept uh, that they would use probably on the electric cars. Is up on the grip, there's, there's uh, two little black prongs with metal clamps. And as the gondola goes through the station, it actually charges and clamps up to, uh, to an electrical wire in there, and it charges the battery as it goes through the station. It's a rapid charging, and you can also rapidly discharge these batteries as well. So the technology is already sitting there on top of the gondola, so they could use the same thing in the in electric cars over at the Magic Kingdom. Larry, uh, standing room on the gondola is like on the buses of monorail. Uh, mass exits could be fun. You know, I'm not sure whether or not they're going to allow the standing. Uh, I haven't seen whether or not they're going to do that. 
from you know everything that I see about the, the CWA gondolas, Doppelmeyer, uh, a lot of the stuff that I see, I don't see people standing on them. So I don't think they're gonna they're gonna be pushing that many people. They're you know they're they're limited for ten. They're designed for ten. Um, so I don't think you're gonna have people standing in them. Now there are gondolas out there that are designed for that. There are gondolas out there that are designed to hold like 30 people on board. Um, you know, could that be something they look at in the future to have larger gondolas? And you can actually stand. Some of these gondolas have the glass bottoms on them where you can actually look down and you can stand around like the center and you can look down through it. That would be very, very cool. Chris, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day out here today. I'm having such a great time. I mean, look at that beautiful blue sky. And seriously, the sky is that blue. It's, I'm from Ohio, and our sky was always overcast and gray. Even in the summer, it just had this weird haziness about it. But down here, it's just, it's a completely different sky. I always tell people that the sky is different over Disney. It's the most beautiful blue sky that you'll find. Hey, Zippity Doodad, thank you for being here. I truly appreciate it. Chris, is it me or am I quiet? Um, I'm trying not to be quiet. I'm sitting right on top of the uh, the boat engine, so it just may have a lot of exterior noise. I got the, the lapel mic on my shirt here, so hopefully you guys are hearing me okay. I was kind of looking up too. I'll try to look down a little bit so I can talk into the mic a little better. All right, all right. Rob, I am the Gondola King. Thank you so much. Really, really trying to bring you guys quality information. Uh, I've got a lot of great people helping on here as well. I uh, truly appreciated everybody with the input. Uh, again, I'm, I'm learning along the way too. I, I'm, I've learned so much from, from day one where I didn't know anything about it to the things that I know now. And it all really, really is because of a lot of great people out here who contribute great information and just have a lot of fun with it. So it's exciting. I'm excited about it and I hope I can get you guys excited about it as well. Zero, the motor sound drowns out my audio. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I love sitting back here though, it's just it's one of my favorite boat rides going through uh, Crescent Lake. Here's the Swan and Dolphin, hope you guys saw my, uh, my live stream from the Swan and Dolphin the other night, where it was lit up at night. Uh, the walkway between here where they light up the palm trees with the, the neon, the blue, and the green, the red colors, and it's all synchronized to music, it's really, really, really great. If you get a chance to come over here and check that out. Uh, it's really, really, a uh, really great experience. I can't say really enough. I guess that's my word for today. David, you hear me? Awesome. Everybody hears me fine. That's good to know. Thank you. John Rowe, super thankful uh, for Rob's videos. They give me a Disney fix until I'm able to get back here. Well, that is exactly what I'm going for. As long as I can uh, bring some of this to you guys. Like I said, I'm just kind of paying it forward because when I used to sit in Ohio and dream about yeah, being here, um, you know, I would watch some other vloggers out there and they would bring this stuff and I was so appreciative for them. And I just knew that I wanted to get down here and do this for myself and do the same thing to bring uh, these gorgeous, gorgeous things to you guys. And I mean, being able to live stream is just such a huge, huge benefit. Um, Resort TV One, I'm sure you can attest to that too. The, the live streaming is just so much fun. Plus, yeah. I've met so many awesome people. I love talking to you guys, love some of the relationships I've made so far, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. So, if you guys appreciate it, I appreciate it too. I just appreciate being here with you guys. Richard, uh, you're welcome. Thank you along for the ride. Zero, it's fine. We understand the situation. Uh, we can still hear you. Chris, I uh, can't wait. I'm a cast member and hope to ride it soon. Awesome, I know uh, they're gonna be using cast members to do testing for the gondolas, so uh, thumbs up for you guys. If you do ride it before I ride it, I will be extremely jealous, but you absolutely have to come on, you have to tell us how amazing it's gonna be and how smooth the ride is. Um, you know, you see, you look at the old uh, the Skyway, how it used to be at the Magic Kingdom, and it was a different technology. You had, it was sort of a ramp that you would slide down and the gondola would sway back and forth and it was open and the wind would just blow it around. You can actually shake that thing back and forth. Uh, completely different technology here. It's a very, very smooth entrance and exit. The gondola ride itself is completely enclosed. You're gonna have the audio, you're gonna have music, you're gonna have all the scenery around you. It's gonna be a very, very 
nice experience, a very smooth experience. That's why I'm not afraid to ride it at all, and I don't like heights. So really looking forward to it. Zippy Doodad, couldn't set it better myself. That's our dream too. Well, absolutely, you gotta get down here and do it. Just start doing it. Just sharing it with people. People just love it. And you know, anytime I hear great feedback about that, it really makes me feel good. So much appreciated. Again, at Disney, we'll need to keep many buses as backups. The Sky, uh, the Sky Ride will, at many times, will not be able to go for weather conditions. Yeah, absolutely. We've talked about that a lot. You'll, you're going to have the buses no matter what. Uh, the buses are constantly going to be running. Because, again, even if it's just not weather, it's for people that just do not want to ride the gondola system. They're not going to force people to ride it. It's not going to be your only mode of transportation. No matter what park you go to, there's multiple forms of transportation. Except for, I guess, the Animal Kingdom, there's only the buses there. But they're not going to force you to into a situation where people are going to be afraid to ride something. It's just it's a benefit. It'll be fun for the people that really want to ride it. Uh, but the buses will be there, as always, as a backup. And like I said in the beginning of the video, they have that bus station there that they're going to put right in front. So you know that they're going to have the internal shuttle. The buses are, are definitely going to be running, especially at Caribbean Beach. Jamie Johnson, how many steps do I get in in one day when you're streaming? Bunches, right? Yeah, somebody asked me that before. I need to wear like a step counter. I've never actually done that, but yeah, I, I guarantee you I get thousands of steps in. I've done this walk like between Hollywood Studios and Epcot a bunch of times, walking all over the resorts. Yeah, I did all three uh, all-star resorts before. And um, so I do a lot, a lot of walking. Uh, I'll talk more about that tomorrow. I usually like to do a, a My Story on my birthday tomorrow, so I'll talk kind of about why I like to walk so much uh, in my story tomorrow when I do my, my birthday live feed. Charles, do you think they will cancel the buses from Hollywood to Caribbean Beach once the Skyliner opens? I think we just talked about that. Hopefully I answered that question. Uh, absolutely not. They won't cancel the buses just for, for multiple reasons. Uh, for weather and for people that, again, just do not want to ride the, the Skyliner, they're going to have bus options. Disney Nerd Herders, are they going to be uh, doing more transportation options after they're done with the Skyliner? Uh, nothing that I've heard. Uh, I think the Skyliner is pretty much going to be the way they're looking into the future. Uh, the monorail, I don't think we're going to see any more monorail lines. Uh, we may see new monorails in the future as far as maybe the Mark, uh, will be the Mark 8. But as far as expanding the monorail, I don't see it. Uh, I think Disney really, really wants to uh, gear up for more Skyliner all across pro property. Once people see it up and running, I think it's going to become a part of the Disney magic. Uh, you're going to see it more and more, and it's going to become just like the monorail. People are going to come here, and they're going to say, i got to ride the Skyliner. It's just part of what I do when I go to Disney. And we're going to see it at, at more resorts. You're going to see it at more hotels. Uh, it's, a, it's a more efficient way to transport people. It's a more cost-effective way to do it, and I think it just looks cool. Hey, Robbie, welcome on board. Always appreciate you having you here, my friend. Uh, CWA is delivering more cabins as we speak. Should have the entire fleet by May. There we go. Uh, we just saw that there are 50 new cabins that are sitting over at Pop and Art. Uh, Robbie says that they're delivering more as we speak. So my count was going to be like right around 150 gondolas. Robbie, I don't know if you want to confirm that. Uh, you got a number as far as total gondolas. I was thinking around 150. Because right now they got about 50 or 60 sitting in the yard over at Caribbean Beach. They have 50 more sitting at Pop and Art. And if they're bringing more in, you know, they'll bring another 50 in. That should be right around that 150 mark. EF, happy early birthday. Thank you so much. Jamie, uh, why don't I wear a Fitbit? Yeah, I'll have to definitely look into that. Uh, I, I should start counting my steps. David, remember riding the uh, the Skyway once? It was fun uh, to have that view in the park. Absolutely. Now that uh, Robbie's on board here, I can tell my uh, my Skyway story again. Von Roll was the uh, the company who originally designed and, and installed the uh, the Skyway at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. So, if you guys remember riding that Skyway, that was, that was created by Von Roll, um, and they were actually bought out by Doppelmayr, 
I believe it was back in the 90s. And now Doppelmayr is the company who is building the, the new Disney Skyliner. So in a way, there's sort of a historical uh, reference um, back to the history of the Skyway as sort of becoming the new generation of the Skyliner. So it's kind of a, a neat little story I love to tell all the time about that. So definitely check out uh, Robbie's uh, Facebook page. It's uh, Von Roll VR 101 Skyrides on Facebook. A lot of cool information about the Skyway, a lot of cool information about gondolas in general. Really knowledgeable, knowledgeable guy, so check him out. Disney Nerd Herders, is the Epcot monorail going to be running through the uh, through the new hotel at Epcot? Uh, no, they won't run it back there. The new hotel... Um, oh, oh, we're talking about the new one that's proposed in the... Uh, I'm thinking Hollywood Studios. I'm thinking the, uh, the Space Hotel. Um, yeah, I believe there's a new proposed hotel that's going to be in the front, uh, just to the to the right of the entrance of uh, Epcot over there. And could they run the monorail through it? Absolutely. I think that would be awesome if they did that. Uh, I don't know anything for sure. It's just sort of things that are floating around out there. Um, but that would be awesome if they actually ran it through. Somebody actually told me that there was an uh, original proposed idea to run the, the monorail through the Swan and Dolphin get over to the Epcot at one point so so that never happened you never know there's all kinds of rumors out there all kinds of stuff uh, would it be awesome to see this stuff absolutely will it actually happen who knows Zippity do dad I'm gonna do my first vlogging in April any tips uh, we've been to Disney seven times in 18 months and decided to start vlogging our trips can't wait um, I always think to find something that you love. You know, I, I've been doing a lot of vlogging in different places, but you know, I really started getting passionate about the, the Skyliner, and it seems that people have really started to relate to that. So uh, find something that you're really passionate about, that you really, really take pride in, and kind of run with that, and everything else just kind of falls into place. So, and develop relationships, obviously. You know, I'll definitely watch when you're doing it. So, you know, come up with really great information, things that people can use on a daily basis, you know, show them, you know, when they travel down here, this is what they're going to see, this is what they want to do, and kind of live it in real life. That's that's what I try to do. So absolutely go for it, man. I'll, I'll definitely tune in when you start doing that. Juan, hey, thank you. I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. Glad to have you back. Jamie, uh, is the gondola higher the same height as the Skyway was in Disneyland? I don't know exact heights. Robbie, if you're still on, you can probably answer that question, what the exact heights were. Uh, I'm sure there's some points that are, are pretty much that same height. The highest points for the, uh, the Skyliner now kind of run through the Epcot parking lot here. Uh, there's some higher points that run between Pop and uh, Art, and also over top of the Caribbean Beach. Those are kind of your highest points for the, uh, for the gondolas. Other than that, the, the towers are fairly low. You see them when they're coming into the station. It's almost like you can you can jump up and, and tap the bottom of some of the gondolas are so low. Especially coming into the International Gateway, they're really low. They come right over the boat station and right into the International Gateway, and they're right over the top of your head. EF, uh, what other YouTube will you recommend? Uh, for Orlando Parks. Uh, Tim Tracker is always awesome. Uh, I love watching uh, Big Fat Panda. He is an awesome, awesome guy. Jeff Lang does some amazing videos. Uh, these are just guys that I know, that I've met and hang out with. I uh, love those guys. Um, you know, my my inspiration was Ricky Bertanti, who unfortunately isn't doing anymore. He, he sold off Inside the Magic. Uh, I always loved Inside the Magic. I would always watch his... Uh, his uh, podcast and everything, and that's what really inspired me to start doing this. So, well, Inside the Magic has changed a lot since then. As far as vloggers go, those are really great. Some of my friends who actually do it, um, the Theme Park Brothers, Michael from Theme Park Brothers, does really, really great work with his kids. Uh, the Moving Platform, uh, his name is Michael as well. He does some really, really awesome vlogs. So, a lot of cool people to check out. Nemo with glasses. Hey, uh, finally catch my live stream. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Jeffrey, hey, saying hello to Jeff. John, EF, uh, Tim Tracker is great. Yeah, Tim Tracker's kind of the, the big gun, so 
Uh, I'm sure if you don't know who Tim Tracker is, uh, you definitely have seen one of his videos. Even if you don't know who he is, you've, you've seen one of his videos, I guarantee you that. Does uh, a lot of great stuff in the parks, has a lot of fun. So, you know, Tim Tracker is like the most popular, everyone talks about him. My sister uh, loves him, and we do too. Yeah, he does some really awesome stuff, he's a fun guy, uh, a lot of great information. Uh, really genuine too, seems to, to be very genuine with the stuff he does. So. Definitely check him out, which I, I guarantee you probably already have. He's, he's all over YouTube, so. Yeah, no, there's a picture there. You just gotta have to take it. Tyler, uh, what's the estimate time uh, on announcement of gondola expansion? Uh, what has already been announced? Uh, nothing as far as future phases has been announced. Uh, if they do do any sort of announcements, it'll probably be at the, uh, the D23 events. Uh, which I believe we have two of them coming up at 4 2021. So uh, we could see some announcements as far as future expansion. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Nothing so far has been announced by Disney. There's all kinds of speculation out there. You know, you can assume all you want if they'll go over to Animal Kingdom, if they'll go to Disney Springs, Magic Kingdom, whatnot. Just going to wait for some people to board here from the boardwalk. Had a lot of fun with my daughter and her friend the other night at the boardwalk great entertainment. She actually uh, got pulled up with a hula hoop girl, and she was uh, rocking the hula hoop, my daughter. She's 10 years old. Or 11. She just turned 11. I'm sorry. Hi. Catherine and I have rode the boats between Epcot and Hollywood many times. We like uh, the walk better. I agree. I love the walk. The walk is a beautiful walk. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes or so to get from one end to the other. But it's definitely worth worth the walk. Um, some really great views, some really great picture opportunities along the way. Uh, I love the boat. I love riding the boats, but definitely walking is uh, walking is awesome. Oh, Justin uh, Justin Scarrett also is awesome. Um, he does Disneyland mostly, but really really knowledgeable guy. He has some some inside things that I never knew about Disneyland, especially him and. Um, uh, I just blanked out what his name is now. Oh, Adam the Woo. Adam the Woo does some pretty awesome stuff too. I like more of the stuff that Adam does uh, when he does like, where he goes to like filming for the Back to the Future, um, like all the movie sites where they do the actual filming of these places. So I like watching that kind of stuff. Nemo with glasses, why do you think Hollywood uh, bus oh, yeah. stops would be done by May? Uh, the bus stops I could see being done by late spring, early summer. So they're really coming along on those. Uh, once those are done, I'm sure they're going to get those in operation as soon as possible because I think they get a lot of gripes from having to walk on the temporary bus stops right now. So I think those will be done as quickly as possible. Cyril, the walk is great, just not the burning sun. Yeah, you want to pick your days when you do that walk. Chris, uh, we'd love for you to do the time comparison between the buses and the Skyliner when it opens. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Just today alone, uh, I waited about 15 minutes at the Jamaica bus stop for the Hollywood Studios bus. So just the wait time alone will greatly, greatly decrease with the uh, gondola because it's going to be a constant loading process. So you're not going to wait very long to get onto the gondola. So that alone would be the check in the gondola box right there. Mike Scott, uh, hi there. Love the Skyliner updates. Happen to be watching a video for work, and the next up, uh, and the next up when that was done was this stream. First time watching one live. Well, thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. I'm glad that it came up in your uh, in your suggestion box. And I welcome you here. I appreciate you being here. I hope you uh, love the updates. Keep watching. I do all kinds of awesome Skyliner stuff. So, uh, Mr. Cruz Fever One, yeah, spokesman. I just met him the other uh, a couple weeks ago too. He was really cool. And yeah, I started watching some of his videos. Really, really nice guy. Uh, he does some great uh, live streams as well. But I met him over in Epcot. He was a very cool guy. Adam the Woo rocks. I totally agree. That is when he's not getting banned from uh, Disney. I, I think he's been banned a few times, but he keeps coming back, which is cool. Zero, I'm a huge fan of Spokesman, and I uh, robbed Adam a few weeks ago. There you go. 
Elvin, love your updates. Happy birthday. Thank you, my friend. Uh, tomorrow is my birthday, so I appreciate the birthday wishes. And I, I again, I appreciate the... Uh, hey, Mike Scott 8. I was just going to say I appreciate the, uh, the super chats. Five dollars. Great catching uh, a live stream. Finally sent you a tweet uh, with timing between stops. Thank you so much. I will definitely check that out, and I will pass along that information. Thank you for the super chat. Always appreciate it. I appreciate the super chats from earlier. Again, I uh, had some birthday super chats. Always appreciate it. I can't thank you enough. We've got a great shot of Ratatouille as we're coming in here. That is the construction for the new Ratatouille ride, which is going to be incredible once it opens behind France. It's going to be a trackless ride system, and it's going to be, you're basically going to be Remy. You're going to be in the kitchen. You're going to be out running the chef. There's, you go underneath the stoves, and there's stuff chasing you, and there's fire and all kinds of cool stuff. They, they already have in Disneyland Paris, which I'm sure it'll be similar here, but it looks fantastic from the video that I've seen in Paris. So we're turning around. We're going to dock at the International Gateway. Uh, I don't see any gondolas happening here so far. Just wanted to get a quick look at the station and see exactly what's happening over here. I love the fact that we can do this live now. I was always uh, live streaming on Facebook, and the option really wasn't there to do very long live streams. Uh, but now that I switched over to YouTube, I love it so much. I can just go on and on and on. We can do these, uh, these updates live. You can see them firsthand, you know, what it takes to get back and forth from point A to point B. Thank you, Disney Nerd Herders. Thank you for the happy birthday wishes. Mouse Fam One, are, you going, are they going to paint the Skyliner Towers? Uh, that is still up in the air. Uh, we'll take a look here. They have the towers here that are the go away green color. These are the only towers right now that have color on them. And these were actually installed. Hi, folks, watch your step. Welcome to Epcot. As you exit the to your left, please. They were actually uh, installed with the color on board. So whether or not they will paint other towers along the way, we'll see. Fingers crossed they'll at least paint the towers over in the Caribbean beach. They could really use some whimsical colors there. Thank you. So we'll take a quick look here. You can see uh, the towers. These are actually coming from the boardwalk parking lot. This is the line that comes from the Riviera. Uh, comes through and it makes a 90 degree turn in the boardwalk parking lot and then heads over into the International Gateway. So we can take a quick look at the station here. Zoom in a little bit. That is the uh, compression tower, that's called, that goes into the station. So you can see these are the different colored towers. This is what they're calling the go Ray green. And these towers, there's five or six of them that go down the line there. But most of the, uh, the towers are that gunmetal gray color, that unfinished metal color. Uh, these are the other towers that were installed with this color. Obviously, uh, the International Gateway, they're really, really trying to keep with the aesthetics back here. So it kind of makes me nervous that, you know, they didn't install the towers with color on it. But, you know, somebody came up with a great theory before that they don't want to do anything with the towers until they do all the full load testing and stuff on the gondolas, uh, which will make a whole lot of sense because they want to take a look at the towers, look for stress fractures. If they have to do anything with the towers, to paint them now or to put them up with color on uh, would take away from them being able to test the towers in the long run. So very, very good point. That made a lot of sense. Uh, it really gives us a little bit of hope that they still may paint the towers at the very end. So we'll see. And we can check out this line that goes all the way down behind the boardwalk. Yeah, Mike is actually chiming in exactly what I was saying. Uh, somebody mentioned that they didn't paint the towers for the load test so they could see if uh, stress, stress fractures develop in the tower. Sounds plausible. Yeah, I, I really, really like that theory. When I heard that, I'm like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. So. So you never know. Uh, people always chime in with great information. That's why I love doing this. You know, nobody's 100% perfect with the information. I try to get as much great information and share it with you guys as possible from, from you know, people from the industry who really know a lot about this stuff. So if you have some quality information to contribute, please don't be afraid to do that. You know, we'll, we'll talk about it. And, you know, some of this stuff really makes a lot of sense. So 
and it really it really gets our minds going, and that's what's fun about this. You know, it, it doesn't have to be um, you know a race to see what happens. It's just enjoying the process as we go along, enjoying to see what they do and how they do it. Again, I always refer back to the monorail. If, you know, back in 1969, 70, when they were actually building the monorail, how amazing would it have been to have something like this? Too, you could see the progress of how they were doing that. Um, I, I would watch that in a heartbeat, and to be able to be the first to experience the monorail from back then, I, you know, this this is that moment. This is what the Skyliner is sort of providing. It's that moment in history to where. This is a Disney staple of transportation. This is going to be what Disney's going to in the future. So this is our current monorail. This is our modern day monorail. And I just want to be part of the experience and, and make sure that this experience gets shared with everybody because it's it's a moment. I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's not like major moments in history, but this is Disney history. If you're into Disney, this is what you're passionate about, then this is exactly what people love and I love it and I love sharing it with people so so we can see it does not even look like they have the gondola in there it's kind of hard to see it might be back in the uh, uh, behind the bullwheel right now but they're still working on the uh, the archways you can see on either side this is where you will enter and you'll exit uh, just a really pretty station uh, the uh, the artwork on the front the cranes on the front are beautiful uh, again, I love how they're just incorporating the stations into each theming area. You know, they, they didn't go with just the, the standard block stations. Uh, they, they really put the Disney touch on it, which gives it so much characteristic. And of course, the, the gondolas themselves. Actually, one thing that I'm noticing here is behind me, there's no fence. I didn't even notice until I just walked up here. The fence is gone. This used to be fence all around us with the uh, the boat dock. Very cool, I'm just noticing this. So this tower is sitting right in front of me here. Sometimes I'm not even paying attention. I'm sitting here yapping so much. And now we got a nice little sign here, walkway to the Epcot Resorts. Check this out, I gotta get some pictures. Very, very cool. So. I guess it was worth coming over here. You can actually touch the railing. Look at this. I haven't touched this railing in years. <laughs> Not about years, but it's been a while. <clears throat> so I'm going to head over to the other side here. If we make our way over towards the fence a little bit, we can look inside and see a little bit better. Michael, uh, look at the front. Look at the front of the first tower away from the monorail, or away from the terminal. Oh, is, is that the one I was looking at? Is that what you're referring to? I know because it's not. This is. I mean, this looks so cool now without the fence. And they got the signs there. Friendship boats. Let's see. What are you asking? Let me go back here. You guys are asking some questions, I'm sorry. Uh, does the first tower over the boat terminal have hidden lights in the arms? Uh, let me see. You know, somebody, I had seen this before. What I thought they had lights on the top of the tracks, because for the life of me, it looked like it was lit up. There was like lights, like they were gonna light up the sheaves. But the more I looked, I looked as closely as I possibly could, and I cannot see any lighting at all up near the sheaves. And what I believe that it is that we're seeing when some people are posting, oh, there's, there's lights on the front of the towers, I think it's sun glare. I think it's the, the front of the sheave, the glare that's coming off of the sheaves is creating that effect that looks like a light. So you want me to see if there's any kind of hidden lights? Are we talking up by the sheaves? kind of hard to see because the sun is like right above this tower so I can't really look directly up into it I'm not sure I have to wait for the sun to go down and take a look at the towers better but I cannot see anything that looks like actual lighting up there
Robbie, the Skyway has come full circle. A lot of amusement parks are looking at this Doppelmayr D line. Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, looking at the Doppelmayr D line is a resurgence in the classic Von Roll Skyride. That is very cool. I love the history there. I'm glad you shared that with me about the history. I love passing on that story. And I'm glad that uh, other parks are using it as well. I think it's so, so cool. Todd, not sure if this has been covered yet, but will the Skyliner stations have moving walkways for boarding similar to the People Mover and Spaceship Earth? Uh, it will not. It's just a, a stationary platform, probably concrete. Uh, it does not have the, the moving platform like the uh, People Mover. I just use the People Mover as a comparison uh, just to give you an idea of how it loads. I mean, we've actually seen the gondolas go through the stations now, so we kind of get the, the idea. But that's basically what happens as you're loading and unloading in that constant uh, that constant motion. But it does not have the moving platforms inside. Sean, hey buddy, I wish you were here with me too. All right, I'm going to find a little bit of shade and try to catch up on some of the questions here. Nemo of Glasses, uh, I really appreciate your in-depth coverage of this. Only, uh, let's see, only strange people like us could spend an hour looking at theme park construction. Absolutely. I do this every day. I mean, I will continue to do this. This just fascinates me. Even just the stupidest thing that they took down a fence just makes me so excited. But, I mean, look how beautiful it looks again here. You know, you saw that, that green construction fence around the uh, boat dock for so long. And now it just looks beautiful again. Those signs look gorgeous. Uh, you know, the boat dock looks gorgeous. Um, the, the Skyliner towers, they, they really blend in. I think the green color blends perfectly in back here with, uh, with the International Gateway. You know, we have uh, Ratatouille that's being built back there, but eventually that building is just going to, to blend in as well. Uh, it's going to be gorgeous back here. Disney, Disney is not dumb. They know what they're doing. You know, we have to go through this for a while. We have to go through construction to get to the other side of Disney's vision and how gorgeous it's going to be. You know, people are, oh, it's going to ruin the International Gateway. It looks terrible, all these things. It's Disney. Disney is the master of creating beautiful art and creating wonderful things that we all love. And, you know, people back in the day, we're probably saying the same thing about different forms of transportation and different things that they're building in the parks, but they are what they are today and we love them. So we have to just keep our faith in what's going on here because as the little pieces come together, uh, it just becomes more and more beautiful. It becomes more and more awesome what they're doing back here. Okay, I know I got a lot of comments back here. I'm sorry, guys. Gary, uh, do they expect that the people that aren't staying at the Disney resorts will attempt to park at the resorts and use the gondolas to avoid parking fees? You know, that already happens just because they're building the gondolas. Uh, you know, security knows what they're doing. They have the certain times where they just don't allow people to, to park in the resorts. Um, I mean, they're not dumb. They know people come in and they do it. It's, I hate when people take advantage of that. Park in the parking lot. You know, if you're going to the park, park in the parking lot. If you have an annual pass especially, you know, the, the parking fees, yeah, they're, they're a bit high, but, you know, don't, don't ruin the whole resort concept here because eventually, if it gets too bad, Disney will start charging to park in the resorts as well, which, you know, I love going to the resorts and I love going to grab lunch there and stuff sometimes. And yeah, I'll go, if, if I'm actually going there to have lunch, you know, I'll park there and you stay there for half an hour or so, you do what you do and then you leave. You don't park your car there and go there the whole day, so... They're, they're going to take a look at it. They're, they're going to have their systems in place to make sure that people just aren't going there parking and using the uh, Skyliner. You know, you may have to scan your magic band or something like that. We'll, we'll see as it goes along. Todd, not sure. Uh, okay, we did that one already. Ciro, uh, Nemo, those streams are so relaxing. I love them. Gary, uh, do they expect that people... Uh, okay, I think I'm reading the same ones here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up here. Jazz D, uh, that's a very nice way to put it, Gary. Uh, I want to go to Disney, uh, but it's too far away for me. I think I missed a lot of uh, what you guys are talking about. Talk amongst yourselves. It's okay. 
Only One Kenobi. I've seen that name before. I love that name. Love your documentation of this construction. You're the official channel. Uh, flight for the Skyliner, etc. Thank you so much. I'm hearing that a lot. Uh, it really means a lot to me. I'm really, really passionate about this. So I love bringing the Skyliner stuff to you guys. So definitely keep watching and I will keep bringing it to you. Larry, park in the parking lot and then ride the Skyliner. Yeah, park in the in the theme park parking lot and then, you know, go to Hollywood Studios and ride it over to Caribbean Beach. You know, go have lunch over the Caribbean Beach and then ride it back to the parking lot. That's how you should be using this. Brian, no top lights. Uh, need most areas, Disney, not all because of the no-fly zones. Uh, you know, that could be true. You know, will they have to put maybe some lighting up there for emergency reasons? You know, if they have to do an evacuation at night, do they have to have some kind of lighting up there? We'll see as we go along. But like I said, I've seen what looks like lights on the front, and for the life of me, I cannot find, unless they're, uh, you know, LED lighting of some sort and you just can't see it. But I believe it's the reflection off of the, the, the sheave wheels in there and it's just the, the sun reflecting off of it because as the sun sets the light goes away i have not seen it lit up at night only during the daytime when the sun is shining so that's kind of my my thing there uh randy beautiful weather and low crowds perfect day yes it is perfect here today i'm loving it robbie can i focus uh on the tower right after the station tower I uh, wasn't able to see how many sheaves are up there. Let me, uh, let me see if I can just focus in on it there. Hopefully that's a good enough picture for you. So that is the tower right above the boat dock. Get a good picture there for you. So that is the, uh, the compression tower going in. There we go. Lori's Bits and Pieces. Uh, we are watching a lot. It's not often I get to watch live. Uh, so appreciative. Thank you so much, uh, Lori. I do appreciate you being here. Catherine, you forgot about the no-fly zone. Yeah, there you go. Although there's helicopters flying over here every five minutes. I try to do these streams all the time, and all I got is helicopters flying over my head. Chris, everyone should take three seconds to click that like button for him. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Absolutely, guys. If you do love this, it really does help if you click the like button. Uh, after the video is posted as well, if you want to go back and leave comments, click the like button there. Uh, it's always appreciated. It really, really helps to, to grow the channel. Uh, the more people that I can get on board and get involved in this, uh, the better conversations we can all have, the more information we can get. Uh, you never know who comes on board. You know, it, people come on with great information. Uh, a lot of Disney people are starting to watch too. I get a lot of cast members on here that said how we get all the information from you. You never know what kind of uh, things that we'll learn along the way too. So the more we can share it out and get the word out, it'll be a lot of fun for all of us. Uh, let's see, Mouse Fan first, Florida requires lights on any building 100 feet or taller. Those might be emergency lighting. I mean, we'll see. If, if they are up there, it's gotta be some sort of an LED lighting that you just can't see with the naked eye. Uh, but right now, I'm thinking it's just reflection off the sheaves. I really do. Actually, I think it's, uh, I think you're right. It is the 200 feet, John, because Cinderella's Castle, I think, is like 198 feet. There's a story about that. Uh, because they couldn't go over that 200 foot mark because they'd have to put a light on top of it. So I, I think, I think it is 200 feet now that I remember that story. Okay, uh, so I'm going to get you turned around here. Hang on a second. There we go. All right, guys, uh, I'm actually uh, kind of running out of charge here, and I'm going to have to start making my way back. Uh, as always, if you guys watch me, you know, i got to go pick up my daughter from school. So I appreciate you guys being here. As always, I hope you really enjoyed this. Tyler, you're just coming on. Tyler the Imagineer. Uh, I'm glad you're back, but I'm actually checking out here, Tyler. Go back and watch the whole thing. Really, really some cool stuff that we saw today. Um, so have a lot of fun watching this. It will post right away so you can go back and watch the whole thing. 
definitely check out PassportToTheParks.com. All of my social media is there. I do appreciate when you uh, follow along, Instagram, Twitter. Again, I need some love on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of followers there. Could always use more. Uh, Facebook, love you guys having, yeah, love having you guys there. Subscribe here on YouTube. It really does help. Uh, again, thank you so much for the, uh, the super chats as well, the birthday wishes. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for that awesome uh, super chat. Uh, Joe, try to get through them all here. Rick C. Uh, I'm Oswald from the Netherlands. David and uh, Wayrez, thank you so much. It really, really means a lot with the, uh, the super chats. And uh, Mike Scott as well, thank you so much. Uh, catch me for the first time live. Uh, again, it's my birthday tomorrow, so I will be back with a, uh, a very cool live stream tomorrow. We'll have some fun. Uh, hopefully, I'll get some awesome birthday wishes from you guys, and we'll have uh, some fun together. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you very, very soon, and bye-bye. Uh,